I don't know how I got sidetracked so far. I just wanted a belt grinder and here I am 3D printing a CNC machine. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? Maybe give us some kind of introduction? The Print and C is an affordable, open source, do-it-yourself CNC machine capable of machining wood, aluminium and even steel. Developed by an Australian guy called Mark Hogan. It's based on locally sourced construction steel beams, HGR20 linear rails, 1610 ball screws and a bunch of 3D printed parts. But put down your breaker bars and pitchforks, the 3D printed parts are mostly used in non-structural or non-load bearing applications. On the free design website there is a calculator where you can put in your desired work area and also the steel tubing dimensions and it will put out a component list of length and quantity of parts you need. You can either self-source the components or order a kit directly from the website. Mark Hogan, the creator of this project, has a really awesome parametric Fusion 360 model for free. The basic assembly is bolted together with a bunch of screws. Also the linear rails get bolted onto the steel beam, so your linear rails are only as flat as your steel is. Sure, one could go ahead and square up all the steel tubing with a big enough mill or surface grinder, but the whole design philosophy of this project was to create an affordable machine that is easy to put together and needs almost no special equipment. As I tend to overcomplicate things, I didn't print out the 3D printed templates. Instead, I used my mill with the DRO. Since my mill doesn't have enough X travel to drill all the holes, I've drilled until here. Moved the whole beam to the left. To index the new hole, I've mounted a 6mm reamer to act as a go no go gauge so I can determine the X position. The holes for the linear rails don't need to be super accurate since there is a a lot of wiggle room. Since I bought my linear rails a little bit too long, I need to shorten them with an angle grinder. <coughs> For the location of the BK block, I need to first install the ball screw since it determines where this block sits. I've gone ahead and done this here. And now I just need to transfer punch these two holes. For the Y roller I drilled the holes according to the model, but the model has the holes for a single carriage, not a dual carriage. Now I need to weld these four holes shut and hope it doesn't warp. If the linear carriages don't slide smoothly. Loosen the wipers here so they can adjust themselves. There's a little plate. Slide them on the rail and flush them with WD-40. It all started out when Phil Vanderlei released his belt grinder video. It quickly turned into an obsession. I researched, I wrote material lists, I calculated all the costs. But I am cheap, so I figured 
Why not build a furnace and cast my own aluminium flywheel? That is one of my more brilliant ideas. That was like one year ago, so I built my first furnace, eventually figured out how to cast an aluminium flywheel, but you can't just slap a casted wheel on there and call it a day. You need to machine it. Mm -hmm. That's the disassembled machine, now I just need to paint it. When assembling the base structure I found it works best when you only put in one screw on each joint, then square up the frame and then thread on the remaining three screws so the holes line up. So one thing led to another, it led me to buying a lathe, but the lathe needs a cabinet. For building a cabinet you need a welder, but the welder needs a welding cart, so you need to build but a wait, welding wait. You built all this stuff in order to save, what, like 100 bucks for some aluminium round stock? Aren't you supposed to help me, not to shame me? Yeah, no, nah. you are right, I am sorry, but, but what has this to do with a 3D printed CNC machine? After assembling the C-axis I found that either the upper roller or the lower L-bracket is out of square. 
Theoretically, you can adjust the lean of the Z-axis with a screw, but since I own a mill, I did mill the surface of the upper roller square. After assembling the C-axis, I noticed the ball screw winding up near the BK block. So I checked the 3D printed walnut housing and noticed it was half a millimeter too thin. So it bent the ball screw out of alignment. After reprinting the walnut housing, it worked flawlessly. Two things to consider if you are planning to build this yourself. First, when attaching the ball nut to the roller, make sure the face plate doesn't touch anywhere sideways. There must be a little wiggle room, otherwise it will inevitably bind up. Slide the face plate onto the ball nut, then slowly slide the roller onto the face plate. This should go together without any friction or binding. Second, I tried to align the linear rails to the steel beam with a dial test indicator. Forget this, you'll only transfer the bow of the steel beam to the linear rail. It works best when you assemble everything, you keep the linear rails not fully tightened and slide the axis back and forth while gradually tightening the screws. This will cancel out any bow which is in the linear rail. I know this is not the best method, but not everybody has a DIN 876-0 one and a half meter straight edge at home. My first furnace disintegrated during my last copper melt, so I needed a better one. So I started searching the internet, YouTube, forums, random websites and even second page of Google search. But there wasn't much info out there. Eventually I stumbled across thehomefoundry.org. You know, also at this point you just simply can go and buy some aluminium round stock. You don't need to build yourself a second furnace. I looked furnace. what other people designed and what worked for them and just copied it. The side wall of the furnace is refractory concrete, which is split into four pieces to allow for thermal expansion, so it doesn't crack. But in order to cast those segmented pieces, you need a mold out of XPS. And this is where the CNC comes into play. but you simply could use a hot wire cutter also, right? I don't think you really understand me. I see, 